guys. Okay, so tonight uh, we have Ken Bailey joining us. Ken Bailey started caving in the 70s on his own around his house with a candle. And uh, since then he's led many, um, he's led and educated many students and trained as an emergency responder and met more and more cavers over the years. He's currently a level two with the National Cave Rescue Commission. He's fundraised and led a number of technical rope training courses, which are ongoing. He caved independently for a while with friends and family attending Spelio Fest and Bridge Day, and eventually was convinced to join the Louisville Grotto, where he has served in different leadership roles, and he is also an NSS member. He says joining the NSS is worth it for the journal. His professional life uh, takes place in a GIS department where he maps sewers, uh, which is not cave mapping, but very similar, or it did. Uh, and um, his department required interagency cooperation across multiple counties. Uh, so in states of emergencies, he worked in flood protection for the city of Louisville, Kentucky. He's passionate and skilled at survey and cave map drafting. He's also active in conservation and activism working to stop a rock quarry in Kentucky that would destroy a significant karst area. Ken has also volunteered on many cave projects, including significant contributions to funding, innovating, and studying cave biology of cave bats and beetles. He's a founding member of the Kentucky Karst Con Conservancy, and he's currently their president. They're an active small group providing education and conserving the Big Bat Cave in Breckenridge County, Kentucky. He's also the land manager for Frenchman Knob Cave in Kentucky for the Southeastern Cave Conservancy. You may have heard of them. And he and his wife own and manage Robert's Hollow Cave in Kentucky. His current project has him working on a, the LIDAR project to map Big Bat Cave. And this project is an all volunteer project used to improve resumes for young cavers. He's worked to gain a number of grants to keep the project going at full speed. And tonight we will see some of the amazing results of that hard work. Ken, take it away. Everybody else mute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you're now in charge of editing my life. <laughs> I feel, uh, feel very accomplished after hearing that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know everyone or everyone's skill level, but uh, just say your names on the count of three, one, two, three. I'll get most everybody's name. Um, Tara. Bamba. <laughs> Joel. Amy. Amy. Okay, thank you. Great. <laughs> and then uh, uh, I don't know everyone's skill level, so if you if I I'm, I'm going to go ahead and talk kind of the generic talk as opposed to being really nerdy but if you have a technical question um and you think it's relevant where we're at then we'll go ahead and stop what we're doing just uh interrupt me uh I won't read the chat stuff and uh we'll just you know feel free to interrupt me with questions anytime We so, love nerdy Ken Okay well then be as uh, nerdy as you can yeah, okay. I love that. <laughs> okay. um, you guys, if you want to ask a question, go ahead and just like wave at us and we'll unmute you and stuff. Okay. Well, I'm going to start with a, 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 some video and some slideshows and then we'll just go from there. Um, we'll just figure it out from there. So, are you guys. Seeing a uh, an old guy in a, in an orange helmet. Okay, uh, this is J. Pat Stevens, and he was the visionary on Big Bat Cave, and this was our last trip together. He's in his eighties now, and won't go caving with me anymore. And uh, but he had he had mapped to this sinkhole, bought the property, and then dug the hole and put the. Uh, the culvert in there uh, to uh, keep it from from the sinkhole filling back in, so we can get to access to the cave. And uh, you know, years of us, you know, working together with uh, the Louisville Grotto and taking, uh, you know, I'm always willing to take a crappy job. And uh, we just uh, 
got a great friendship and he trusted me to take care of it um, after now that he's getting past it. But it's just kind of one of those, I always like to take a moment because I'm here because old guys looked in on me and mentored me and um, just kind of, you know, I, I made sure I was a, a, a caver. So I really appreciate all of those guys and what they've done for me and especially what he did for the caving community. And um, he's a 50 year member of the, of the NSS and a founding member of the Louisville Grotto. So it's kind of a, kind of a neat guy. Uh, so man, let's, this is uh, one of those kids that came on the project and just is special. Uh, how, do, how do you get back? Um, this is probably three years of scanning and understanding how a scanner works in a cave to build this. When she scanned this passage, she made a point to make sure she was the lead on this passage and set the scanner. Uh, and we're going to talk about how to set the scanner up and all that stuff was going. But she made sure she had them all in the correct, it started from the same orientation and was able to make this video. And I'm really proud she used, this is part of her portfolio that, uh, and she's up getting her PhD now in uh, biology up in Canada. And uh, this was one of her pieces that helped her get that free ride up there. So that's the whole point of this. If, if you're in science in Kentucky, uh, you're gonna have a really crappy job. And if you're a woman in science in Kentucky and wanna work in science, you're leaving Kentucky. That's just as simple as that. And so I, a lot of the kids that come on this, their college students have to leave the state to, uh, to go work. And um, this was like I say, her, her thing here. And it's just the pinnacle of, of, of the LIDAR, are just really beautiful work. Uh, this is a this is about a four hour crawl without uh, a lidar, and then you know a six hour crawl with a sixty five thousand dollar piece of equipment that I gave to a college student that was on my credit card, and this is what she did with it. I'm so glad I trusted her with it. Uh, just a really remarkable thing. Um, again, if you have any questions about it or whatever, I mean, this is not this is taking the thing. One of the things I want you to look for is see the balls as we pass, you'll see these spheres. And then you can also look and you'll see different density patterns. Like we just went over a circle where it's not dense. And those are where uh, the, the tripod set. So the data didn't collect directly under the tripod. And the balls we'll use as a reference uh, for a, a, their, uh, they call them targets in, in LIDAR, but uh, they're basically the monuments and uh, stuff. So. Anyway, it's just a really cool piece of work. And like I said, I'm really proud of her. That's just the conservancy, the Big Bat Cave. And the, well, you got no one wants to read uh, stuff. This was the original uh, culvert that they put in. And it was level with the ground. And then a flood came in and washed everything out of the sinkhole and it left it setting up high. And that's how I got to name the mushroom entrance. It looked like a big mushroom sticking out of there so uh, um, this was some of the early uh, radio stuff I mean in 1970 a guy went to Radio Shack cobbled this together and they documented that that was the sinkhole from the top and I've seen these guys still use the same piece of equipment so it's really a neat thing um, I don't know how familiar everybody is with Kentucky geology uh, but we basically have uh, the bluegrass here and uh, of course over here is the Cumberland and uh, the last uplift, the last uh, mountain building event when the uh, all the Blue Ridge and all that stuff, the Cumberland Plateau was being built. And that up warps this, and that's why we have this slope over here. And that's what gives us Big Bat. We're, we're right here on this escarpment over here. And uh, actually a little further over. Plus that faulting system gives plenty of ways for the water to get down in. There's probably seven or eight 14 mile caves over here. It's a really, really neat part of the world. Here's that showing that up warp and how we were built. And we're like I say, we're over here uh, in between the Cumberland, the Penny Royal is what that area is called. Uh, but basically, you can see it's plowed off and filled in these basins. Uh, so it's a dome and basin. Uh, this is a little more general geology, and this is really just to show you how Big Bat's made. This is Big Bat over here, and then Chris's cave is just to the north. It's in the same drainage, and we'll look at some of that too. But this escarpment here is uh, 
cut across with this paleo ridge, the sandstone ridge, which is what we think is how all the water got down there to build these long caves. And like I say, it's in between two major fault systems, the, the, the uh, uh, Rough River Fault System down there. So it's a um, really just a fascinating, it's just a thing. Uh, just to show you, we're in the St. Genevieve and the Paoli Limestone is where most of Big Bad is. And then uh, there's that Moore Town, but you go up to the sample and that's our cap rock. And we'll, we'll look at that later too. So um, just to give you an idea, really, really cool how it crosses under streams so you know these streams came later and it goes under ridges and just the where big bag goes it's really kind of a cool thing um just to look at it with the topography and stuff uh i find this really fascinating uh this is a, a you know a dim this isn't lidar but it's a if you take a look you can see the cave and down here i mean i didn't see this until i looked at it but you've got this paleo channel and uh, you know, with the Moore Town or that other sandstone elevation, we could we we certainly had the right rocks, the right lithology to have a set a, a previous uh, a cave building episode. And you can find those fossilized channels down here. There's a cave called Carmen's, and it's higher up in the rock column. And it's an older. Cave. They're always really highly decorated, and and these paleo passages from a previous uh, cave building episode. Big Bad is a brand new cave. It's very little decorations. There's a, it's floods. It's a flood cave. It's con, it's still being built, and uh, so like I said, see this thing. But it's also oh darn it. Um, uh, one of the cool things is if you'll notice these passages down here, they're all fed by these sinkholes. You can see these sinkholes here, um, feeding it. So that's kind of cool to see how the where the water's coming in and how it's going out and all that kind of stuff. Just kind of a neat way to look at the cave and, and stuff. This is was uh, the original idea for this for the LIDAR project. And I'll, I'll step back and we'll 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 take a look at that. Um, well this is uh, you know the the cave because of where it is on the escarpment if you're going parallel to the escarpment you've got these fluvial uh, tubes you know that, and and, um, and then you have the Bados canyons uh, depend you know that are going north south or, or into the thing the downhill flow and so it's really easy to tell what direction you're headed in by the passage you're in uh, so it's a really cool kind of thing to, to know it's a really diverse this waterfalls are in there and it's just amazing just how many different things. It's 14 miles uh, of cave. So there's just as, a, a ton of different environments in there. And, and just by, we are a white nose cave. Uh, Big Bat had a thousand bats. Um, and then uh, we have 40 at the last official bat, bat count, um, which is, uh, uh, you know, to be in charge and to watch that happen just was, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, as a geologist, somebody trained in geology to see it in extinction or an expatriation is just an honor. Most of the time when you see an extinct species, it's just the fossil remains. But to, to watch it happen was kind of in awe. And then the other half is really heartbreaking because, you know, my job was to make sure that didn't happen. So, uh, you know, it is, it just is. So this is, like I say, to get how this project came about is Ben Shinneberry here. Uh, bought this really expensive piece of equipment, and he and I worked together. He was uh, one of our contractors when I was with city government, and he uh, uh, had bought this piece of equipment and was lamenting that it may have been a mistake because it wasn't getting used very much. And I said, I've got a use for it. And uh, so he listened, and uh, our our personalities are completely opposite and just very fortunate that we understand that that's our strength working together. And so he uh, came down and we brought a laptop, set an office up, we scanned everything and, uh, you know, went okay, nothing got broke. Uh, well, one thing got broke and so we only lost $200. I broke it, uh, so uh, that wasn't good. But uh, one of those little spheres that you see back there, I broke. and. Uh, Anyway, he we went on and gave a talk at a at a conference, and now he doesn't have time for me anymore because he's making so much money lidaring. So, 
Uh, he's bought several more machines. He's rented machines. He hires kids out of the project, which is makes me feel good because they they get to go to work and and they there. It's a I mean he's a surveyor surveyor. I mean he really you would learn a lot standing next to him. Any anybody that works for him will learn a lot. Hey, the other Ken, two, yes. What is what does he survey land? Uh, no, mostly they do highway projects. It's really oh. big stuff. State. You know they're 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 generally a contractors for for uh, government agencies, um, so okay. you know he builds big infrastructure. Uh, he's been lidar and bridges. You know, as our in Kentucky, we built one new bridge in the last twenty years, and uh, I was actually I was part of that. We I did three seventeen million dollar studies <laughs> over a twenty year period, um, so uh, we finally got it built. But they scan it now, and with the lidar. Which is actually, you can you can um, uh, take uh, inventory of the cracks and the crumbling, and then come back a year later, rescan it, and you can see how far things have deteriorated. And it's actually, you you have to adjust it because the survey monuments aren't as exact as the lidar. So it's really been a cool uh, a cool thing. It's really really upped the thing. And in fact, one of the girls, uh, actually, she's. Uh, let's I'll go back to her. Uh, uh, she's no longer a kid. She's grown up a little. Is now an engineer with the state who works with Ben. So this project has really been, like I said, my job is I'm just a village idiot that says I'll take a chance and break your equipment. And uh, but these kids get a chance to go. You know, uh, you know, I was a, a poor kid from Kentucky that went to school on the state. It was a, a you know I got hurt and and it was just a, a train wreck of a of a period. But uh, I never got to take internships and stuff because I had to pay rent. And so I turned down a lot of cool stuff. Well, what I wanted to make was a project where a kid could come for one day, have his hands on a $65,000 piece of equipment on the leading edge of technology, and then be able to put that line on his resume. And this just happened to be how we did it. And then they also have access to the data they collected. So if they want to go on with other projects, they have that availability. Uh, this kid right here is working, uh, he worked for surveyors in North Carolina. He wanted to rock climb, so he wanted to go to, he didn't want to stay caving. He went, so he went to North Carolina, and I just gave him a, a phone reference for the city, for the PVA. So he's looking like he was going to move to them. So, you know, you, you know, if, if somebody calls me up and says, hey, you know, what do you think? I'm like, he showed up, he worked for me for free in a really horrible and harsh environment with a really piece, expensive piece of equipment. I, what do you want from him? Um, how much more do you want from a guy? I mean, yes, hire him. <laughs> Uh, the other kid, uh, this is a different type of success. He uh, pays half my daughter's rent now. Uh, so I'm really happy that that's worked out. <laughs> he doesn't pay, he doesn't cave with me anymore because, well, he's not trying to impress his father, future father-in-law. <laughs> he's already, you know, so uh, neither of them cave with me hard. They come, they come on one trip, two trips a year anymore. So uh, they're, they're, they're just, they're, they're, getting their education and doing whatever young people do. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, so this is where we can talk about the equipment a little bit. The Faro machine uh, is a, a, a good solid machine. Customers love that machine. Uh, dealing with the company is a nightmare. They're, they're absolutely, they're, their word it has no value. Their promises are meaningless. Uh, and, uh, and most of their technology is, pirated off other people so it's not really an innovator but their end product is really really solid for customers so you know they they've got one half of this equation right so what you do is you take that scanner and if you look right here this is a a mirror on a 45 and so the the laser comes out here and uh the laser that spins so you've got a 360 degree a ball of, of laser collecting millions of data points. And then the whole unit spins. So that's how you get your 360 degree sphere. And uh, these balls are, uh, we don't take them after the $200 accident I had. Uh, we've uh, I've found that these uh, star foam balls that kids use for uh, making solar dioramas have a really high tolerance. So you can program in their size into the machine 
uh, and because, like so I say, these have a have a size, so the so the program, the, the computer program, can find this one shape and size in the in the in the program. And I've been able to uh, add up uh, add these other balls, and uh, anyone can pair them up. They're a ton of lighter to carry through a cave, um, and there's so many so many different ways you can fasten them to a wall. They're just a lot. There is a lot better idea. Uh, so anyway, that's just the nuts and bolts of it. Um, that's uh, just kind of how that goes. Uh, ben has uh, really put together a class to teach cave lidar. So he teaches a class uh, on our grant every every year. Uh, he's worked to get it as continuing education units. So you can get uh, if you're if you're a professional, you can come and and keep your keep your uh, education units for your career. And so it gets people, uh, you know, a double dose for that. We, uh, that class is like 25 bucks. It's a couple, it's in the cave. And then because it's so cheap and subsidized by the grants, then you owe us uh, one shift of going in the cave and collecting data for the project. So it's, it's a uh, kind of a cool class. And Ben, Ben's the only time I get to hang out with him more is to teach the class because like I said, he's just, uh, his company, the, the company is just taking off, that whole department is just taking off. So um, this is a, a, a passage we call the volcanoes. It's a, the cave is actually active down in that corner down here and it blows out debris and stuff during a, a flood event. You can see all the, the limbs and, and dead trees up in here. But uh, the, uh, the reason I wanna show that is because this is looking at that same passage in LIDAR from the reverse, we're looking towards those guys' faces. And you can see the, the difference there. Um, we don't, we can't carry enough batteries to light up the cave, so the LiDAR can't collect RGB data, so we have no color data or, or photography data uh, because we just can't light it up. But it's, it's, it's a struggle to keep the batteries for the machine uh, current and running, and you have people constantly take out to recharge and you're begging to rent them and just every, you know, it's just always a chore to make that work. And um, so what we do is, is when it goes out to collect the data, it comes back and you get an X, Y, Z. So you know where the, 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 the laser point is in space, but it also comes back with a reflective indices, how reflective is the material it hit. And then we're able to use that to create a, a, a black and white, a, a fake black and white. So how reflective it is or how dense the points are. You know, it's like anything, it's a sphere. So the further you go away, the, the less dense, the further apart the points get. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, we're able to create color and texture and stuff based on, based on that stuff. Um, this okay. is another. Uh, how long, how long does each scan take? Uh, well, it's, it's gone, it started out at seven minutes, but as machines have gotten a little better, we're, we're probably down to three and a half. Uh, we do not scan at the highest resolution because there's no computer in around that anyone could process the data with. So we don't, we're, you know, at a high range data set, but not at, a, uh, at the best it would possibly do because it's just, it would just bog, it just couldn't get done. We just couldn't get anything done if we did that. Uh, you know, but you could take a 10, I mean, we've taken some 10 minute scans uh, for proof of concept and stuff like that. But with the newest machines, you're about three and a half minutes. So it doesn't take long at all. And you try to hide from it or follow it. So you go around as it, you stay out of the laser. Uh, the lasers have also gotten better. Uh, they won't damage your eye now. Uh, before they, you, you know, we had those, we never could keep up with the laser glasses. So it's just like, don't look into the light. Please don't look into the light. And everyone took that advice, so it's it's worked out really well. Uh, this is a, a a passage that's right in maybe 1,500 feet inside from the natural entrance, and we'll look at it on the map later. Um, and uh, but you can see the, the lidar here. So we're looking at this part of the passage right here, and so with lidar you can see this profile of that, and then here's the volcanoes that we looked at earlier, and so it's a it's a just a completely different way of looking at the map. Here it is in, in oblique, and you can see the warm bodies. Uh, they were moving. If they'd stood still, we would have got them. But the, and then you can see the scanner heads 
and this was done with earlier software where you couldn't get stuff out. Now that's a little better software and you can clean up your scans a little better. But this was this was in the infancy of all of it, not just caving, the, the, just the technology. So, uh, again, here's that same passage. So here's where they were standing, right in here. And you can see the scans. You can see these bright spots where the scans were taking place and then the dark spots where there's not enough data. So you can see how we leapfrogged our way uh, down this thing. And that's kind of how it works is uh, a crew will be uh, three, four people is a, is a great crew. And so you have one person managing the scanner and they baby that thing and carry it as if, I make them sign a thing that if we're gonna be in court answering for a broken machine, you're standing there next to me. And uh, so they tend to they tend to take it fairly responsibly. And um, so they'll carry the, the scanner down and then you'll have another person that does book and it's kind of just keeping track of where we put uh, the targets, those those balls, those star phone balls. And that helps the person later on when they're trying to geo-reference them and put them back together. And uh, so two people will be setting those. We try to have an extra set. So you try to be down passage during your scan, set your next setup. And that keeps three people busy. The one person's doing the quick sketch. And all you need is the two walls, maybe a big feature now and then, and uh, where the targets are. And if you can put the scan names on as you go along, that's really helpful. But that that doesn't make or break it. You know, they're, they're pretty good. Again, here's another profile of that. So here's where we came in. Here's the volcanoes, another one. And then the passage goes on to a breakdown. I, I really like this passage, how nature uses the same shapes on micro. And I, one of my first research projects was in fractals. And so this idea that, you know, we use it in, nature uses it in a lectite and something smaller in my thumbnail. And then in a passage, and then a snail also or slug will, use that same form in nature. It's just, nature just gets a good idea for a shape and just uses the heck out of it. And I just, that's always just kind of fascinating. Um, it's probably pointless to know that, but uh, to me, it's just kind of a neat thing to see how it all fits. So you can see the the flow too in, in this one, where there's shadows, where the where it's a stream flow during the, uh, where outside water comes in. So uh, this is, uh, the uh, natural entrance, it's got a karst window down here. It's really a pretty thing. And then it's just a, a, a disappearing stream. The stream just goes right into the cave. And uh, this is uh, from the top of that karst window. And then, uh, uh, of course, this is the passage, the karst window, and then the passage. And this is terminates where that last picture I showed you where everybody was standing in a row. This is, this is, Usually ankle deep water and the ceiling usually pushes you down to three feet. So you've got to get in it and uh, you can hug the walls and, and try to keep your feet dry, but it's, it's, it's just not fun. And it's so long. Uh, this is what it looks like in that karst window. Uh, that's Ed, I see Ed all the time. Uh, he, he's had a back operation though and it just hasn't caved much with, with me much. Uh, this is the plan view. I found this fascinating. Here's the car's window is actually a stream capture. There was probably the original passage. Looks like it goes this way. And then it's a drain into that main passage. Again, this is that part where the, the slug looking thing is that, that this was scanned later on. So it's a really a cool, cool project. Uh, this is, uh, the Pompeii, uh, scan. These people, we, there's a place called the river. And this was just somebody using free software and they just sat still long enough to get captured. And uh, it's just kind of a cool 3D sketch up thing. I, again, it just wake the kids, anybody with an imagination and, and, and some type of shareware will do something cool with the data. So any, anybody that, you know, that works on the project, it, whatever they need to, it, I think they use this to part of a job portfolio. You know, here's my work, here's how I do stuff. Uh, of course, we had an expensive piece of equipment and we took a selfie with it uh, because, well, uh, I had an expensive piece of equipment and I'm a dumbass and uh, my friends will go along with that. So uh, I'm lucky to have dumbass friends. Um, and uh, these are all the people that really made that go. QK4, 
Uh, building more, uh, Mid America was the first company that took a chance on us. They also blackballed us and called all their friends, and it took a took a couple of years to. Uh, uh, they just they I'm 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 renting from their friends, but <laughs> they're they're never going to rent to me again. <laughs> we destroyed a beautiful brand new Pelican case. Uh, Cincinnati Grotto gave us our first grant uh, to pay our mortgage with, and that just gave us the free time to start writing silly. You know, when you're not worried about the mortgage payment, then you got time to write for silly stuff. And this is how that goes. Uh, the Cave Conservancy Foundation gave us the first LIDAR grant that, that they believed in us for that. And uh, Copperhead uh, Environmental has always been helpful. And you wouldn't think, but this is important, CNC portables that the toilet people always knock off 50 bucks so we can uh, we don't mess up the, the farmer's field when uh, anywhere from 20 to 60 cavers come on his land and uh, and camp for a long weekend. So uh, uh, it's, it doesn't, it is an important thing. Uh, Dogwood City Grotto, please keep going to TAG. That's how we get funded. They have always been wonderful. The Cleveland Grotto keeps saying, ask for more money. And I keep doing it too cheap. I don't know, I don't know how to ask, what to ask money for. Uh, so uh, Precision Products, um, they, after Building Point, they're in the same building. They now re rent to us. Uh, they're, they're, um, their uh, office manager and equipment manager grew up maybe 15 miles from Big Bad, had no idea that it was a caving area. But the idea that somebody would come to this part of the world where no one comes hardly and just put this much into it, he just, he treats us like gold. I come down on Friday and just gut his shop. Uh, and then we bring it back on Monday or Tuesday and I get it for one day's rent and just just takes takes phenomenal care of us. QK4 again, they've started they they started in the beginning. And uh and uh yeah, those are the people that believed in us and and really made it made it work for us. Um so let me uh start on the next thing. Um okay. Uh any questions before I go? I only got a couple more things. I'm not, like I said, this isn't, uh, I'm, I'm rushing through this, but I didn't want to make it so long and boring that, you know, cause you know, notice you really like talking to your friends and who doesn't, I mean, I'm tired of being cooped up too. <laughs> so, uh, any questions? It's not boring, Ken. Thank you okay. so much. Show okay. us some more. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, then let me go on to the next thing. And uh, I got, like I said, I got two more things, and then we'll. Um, okay, where is that? Oh, I see what's. Uh, okay. I didn't know that would do that. Okay. Uh, this is uh, what I do when I drink coffee in the morning. Uh, and it's just my, I, I just started learning how to do, uh, what, what can I do with these scans for no money? And I uh, found uh, this real estate software where it works with 360 photographs. And it's a really boring process, but it's all just as cheap as I can possibly get it and a couple of webinars. But I, I bought the, the, you know, the, the space on the internet with it because you have to work in WordPress. Uh, because that's the only seems like the only kind of website that manages huge file or huge file systems. And uh, so anyway, I got this and I started to learn how to do it. And so what I do is I take the scans and the, and there's a the, there's shareware freeware that's with the Faro scanner, and then I'll export it as a as a, a photograph or an image. It's not really a photograph. Then I'll bring it into an old version of Photoshop and then stretch it to the correct, as close as possible. And then I'll uh, project it with this uh, software that uh, realtors use. They're supposed to, you're supposed to put like, you know, a 10 room mansion on or 15 room and you, you make a little tour of real estate. But I found that you can put a hundred, you can put a hundred on there and it works okay. Um, so are you guys seeing uh, the pipe? Yes. Yes, we oh, are. Ben. Also, okay. um, I just shared, uh, I did a big dump of links into the chat so that okay. you can check it out. Sure, sure. Like I say, this is online. You guys can go to it if you want. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, anyway, uh, 
it's really, it's a 360, you know, it's the scan. So you can look anywhere in the scan and, uh, you know, you can uh, zoom in or zoom out. Uh, there's the missing data from the tripod. There's the spheres that we use to register everything. There's the one I broke. <laughs> you know? uh, anyway, what I've done is I've created these uh, uh, little links so you can go down in the cave and take a look around. Uh, here's a, I, I'm, I'm learning how to hide these Easter eggs and stuff. So there's the part of the cave we're in. And uh, so if it, the way you get through is if you see this symbol, that's taking you home or out of the cave. And if you see this symbol, then it's taking you further in. So here's this one and this will take us down the cave. Like I say, you can look around anytime. Uh, and then I'll, I'm going to show you some of this cave because we're going to look at this whole thing a different way with a GIS and, and more of a technical LIDAR. Uh, like I said, this is an image. Um, and so this will, this and like I say, this is just climbing down. Uh, this used to be called the rabbit hole, but I renamed it to the black hole because my friend Dave Black couldn't fit through there. And so we blasted it open to get him through. And, and uh, increase the size of our do donors by 100 pounds. It really was a good idea. Uh, just to give you an idea how big this space is, that's a Pelican box. We couldn't put a tripod in there. We had to put the scanner on a Pelican box. Uh, just to give you an idea of just how tight sometimes we work. Uh, one of the things that we made to, to help is we have a piece of plexiglass with a bolt stuck up through it so we can put that on mud. It's really easy to decon. So like say we're in a white nose cave, but it's an easy thing to clean up with hot water or whatever, but you can really, you can get it down. You can get it down to what a, a fat guy like me can slide through on his belly. So we can get, get that sort of stuff. Um, and like I said, this is, uh, find this fascinating. If you guys uh, look, you'll see these darker rocks, which is that sample sand, sandstone. So that's that cap rock that that's over top that's washing down into the cave. And, uh, Again, there's just tons of it, uh, flagging tape. Uh, again, you can look around any anytime you want. Uh, it's, it's got pretty good resolution. Um, and and uh, like you say, this is, uh, here's that, I find this fascinating. You know, you got this, this uh, phreatic tube, but you still got that classic keyhole as the water disappeared, you can see that uh, it turned into a drain and started cutting down and, and went to more of a, a, a water above the water table or Vados thing. Of course, there's this thing. I, I want you to notice this. You'll see it in the LIDAR. Um, uh, that's a little side passage that we scan. So when we look at the next thing, here's where we had to uh, modify the, the, the tripod and stick the leg out one, you know, to the, at a 90 degree. So that's why we caught that data. Uh, belly crawl here. Uh, of course, you can turn around and we could only do the, you know, that crawl, uh, you know, from one way or another. So it's a still crawling. Oh, I hate that thing some days. Uh, so this part here where you have to crawl through on gravel. Uh, do you guys do that in Texas? Does it, you know, do gra gravel belly crawls? I Just to say a kind word for Texas, when I was... Uh, uh, straight out of high school, there was no work in Kentucky, and I went down to Houston, and those people put me to work and fed me for uh, most of the year. So I've always got a soft spot for uh, for Texas. So it uh, was my home, and they made sure I ate every day and got to go to work. So uh, did not. There's no caves in Houston that I know of. Uh, I really like this. I'd like this is a project that I don't have the time for, but I would like to get in here and measure all of these scallops and uh, just take a look at scallops and how they fit with the cave and all of that. It's just a ton of scallops in here. Um, I'm gonna just get us to the pit so we can look at a different part of the cave and then we'll move on to the next thing. And like I said, you guys are, uh, there's a, a high entrance and a low entrance. So, uh, and both of them, you know, you climb this ladder out of the low entrance and uh, this is, uh, there's a pit crawl so you can go down or you can, like say, come up and then you climb up out through here. And like I said, this is that, uh, and um, when we get, you'll, you'll, we'll look at that pit crawl and we'll take a look at things. When we look at the, the other thing, there's a rope going across the top. Um, 
you saw that picture with the with the girl uh, earlier, and then uh, I love this. Uh, these are these these guys came back of uh, you know uh, from Asia and, and stuff. They didn't really talk you know in, in the early '60s and started having this cape. And uh, uh, you know one of the old guys. He's you know there's this gigantic deal when his mom bought him a Brunton compass. You know. And, and they started, they have no, there's no vertical on this cave at all. It's all just a stick map uh, from this stuff. And then to go from that to this, it's just been this giant jump. And uh, it's been really, really kind of an interesting thing. Uh, uh, like I say, these collectites are all through here. You can, um, there's a, I'm, I'm learning to make tools. So if you come down here, you can click on the tools. But these selectites, uh, they're just tiny, you know, thumbnail size stuff, but it's kind of cool. So like I said, there's plenty of tools down here in the bottom. You can turn right, turn left. Here's the balls where we crammed them in to register the passage. Uh, uh, this is water. Water is the enemy of LIDAR. It's like your eyes. There, you're, you know, you can look at a at, at a pool of water, and if you're at the correct angle, uh, you can see right to the bottom. You can see these rocks, and it creates this beautiful underwater thing. And then right next to it, it bounces the the lidar points a thousand feet into the air, and it's not even in the cave. And you can't understand why your data won't work right. You have to find them and clean them out. And it, it's it's awesome and horrible. It's just not consistent enough to keep. So it's easier just to select all the points at the water line and delete them underneath so you can get something done. So it's a, just as a thing. I, I wrote a paper for the NSS a few years ago on techniques and stuff. Uh, I don't, I didn't put it in any of my links. I don't, I'm, it's always baffles me when somebody reads something I wrote, but uh, anyway, uh, We'll just click through here. These are just, this is just belly crawls. I want to get to the three arrows room uh, just so we can, it'll make a little more sense. And I put these little things in there. And uh, like I said, it's a, uh, I think the girl that scanned this was drunk uh, well, at two in the morning. It was not a pleasant conversation, uh, but uh yeah, here's the three arrows room. Yeah, we're getting close. And yeah. So here we are. This is pretty much the three arrows room. And uh, it's the only reason I got us to that is because it's just a great spot to uh, figure out where you are on the map and where you want to go to next because you have three different options on where to go from here and um, it's always kind of cool and somewhere well, and I miss going here you know, nobody's uh, caving right now in Kentucky, um, or we're not supposed to. I, I'm sure people are. Uh, we're we're uh, we're kind of uh, you know going through uh, trying to figure out what we're going to do. And oh, I think we open the 11th to where we can uh, where stores can start opening. And I think it's we're going to do masks and stuff. I, I'm not I'm not sure. Um, so I'm hoping that that kind of leads to that. I'm uh, I'm not sure on any of it. Uh, this is kind of a cool spot. Anyway, you guys get the point. We'll just you just keep going through the cave. So let me go on to the next thing, and then we'll wrap this up and do some questions and and discussion, and we'll just go from there. So, uh, oh yeah, I'll stop share. Hey, Ken, well, you're uh, loading the next thing, uh -huh. it, and I realize there's not a lot of dust down there, but is that thing susceptible to dust at all? Yes. 
Yes, yeah, so I've, uh, I've, I've had them take their hands and get the battery so dirty that you can't run the machine. And I found that uh, when you're panicked and you've got the only thing you've got your, your camera cleaning stuff, your cloth and the, the, the liquid, that it cleans the battery really well and the case out really well. So what about now, dust in the air? Is the laser, is the laser susceptible to that? Uh, you know, I have not noticed it being a real problem. Uh, you know, it tends to cut through it pretty well. Uh, because it's looking for something big, you know. It's a, I, I, I would have guessed that it's bigger than dust. Okay. That it's a it's a larger thing. Like I said, I've never looked at that because we have not had any problems. I mean, this being a flood cave, there's not a lot of dusty areas in there. It's right. Mostly, mostly sticky mud. Um, you know, but uh, I, again, the dust. I mean, the equipment itself. I mean, we've we've wrecked a leg on the uh, on the. Uh, the tripod because of dirt getting up in there and mud and stuff where it, where it ruined all the shims that lock it. So, uh, and uh, you know, the parts are only in England. So it's like a $3 part and a $15, 30, I think it was a $30 uh, mailing bill. So, you know, but you know, I mean, if I broke it, I fixed it. You know, that's just how that works. So thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, those have been my only ex bad experiences with dirt is just us. Uh, we have not been able to get the balls the dirty enough to where they didn't reflect. They still come out perfectly spherical. So we've given up on trying to keep them clean. They don't, we don't even bother on them anymore. So it's something about its size. So it's, uh, that's, that's not been an issue. So, um, yeah, the other thing I, this, this I took 40 minutes to load. I loaded this yesterday to see how long it took. This is all of the scans. And um, and I load it into ArcGIS into uh, uh, ArcScene, their 3D model, and I color coded them by elevation. And I have not converted it, so it's a metric. And so I am not. Please don't ask me what things are. I can give you approximates on how high and how big I think things are, but don't ask me what those measurements are because I did it was I did it a, a little while ago. I'm not. It's, I just couldn't answer if I had to. But just to give you some ideas of what you've seen in, in images so far, this will give you an idea of where you are in the cave. This is the pipe. So here's the surface right there. And then here's that climb down where we looked at it. Um, are you gonna be said, sharing something or am I, uh, am I screwing this up? Oh, okay, let me, I thought it clicked over, but let's, let me redo this, okay? Yeah, we can't see it yet, Ken. Now let me ask it again, okay? I thought it was just me, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm so glad you said something. Um, that's me, go. I'm the greasy wheel. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So anyway, let me start over so it makes more sense than just looking at my dumb face saying dumb stuff with no context. Here's the pipe. So we looked at the images with the, with the culvert. So here we are in the culvert. And then, like I said, we made our way down the culvert with the images. And then, uh, then here's that crawl that we talked about. Remember I said, hey, remember where that little room is to the side? So that's that room right there before the crawl started. Um, this is the pit right here. So where we came up to the pit and then right here is the three arrows room. So if you look at it from this way, here's that waterfall that we looked at in an earlier picture, I know it was a long time ago, but when I was showing pictures of the cave, this the waterfall was right here. So that's the waterfall. But if you also notice, um, there was a side channel in the bottom of the pit, and that actually connects that now. So that's where the water is going. The water runs in now and then runs down here to that waterfall. Uh, so it's, you know, that's one of the reasons that pit got formed, as opposed to the original drain that carried the down into the, uh, uh, the the three arrows room, which the three arrows room, there's actually, you know, you can see there's three passages coming out of here, but you can see this is obviously the the, the original passage is coming through here and uh, on down, and then three arrows room was uh, it's there's some missing data here, but it's a, a obviously some sort of flood dome, which is so good for us because that led that led this sinkhole to find its way down into it. And then uh, again, there's the uh, this is the helictite room over here. So you can see that 
this the top of this flood dome and there's also there's, there's several passages that all meet right here but that's like i said the data took 40 minutes to load this much there's it just it won't load anymore it'll just crash and die but it's just a way of taking that same data and looking at the caves um, you know, one of the early complaints when I presented this at the, the cartographic session at the NSS is this isn't mapping. And uh, so I started looking at it like, yeah, here is profile, here's a plan view. Um, and uh, if I had lots of money, I would have cross sections anywhere I wanted at any time. But the software, I just beyond the scope of, of a guy that's just a caver. Um, you know, I just don't, I just don't, I'm, you know, that software's not going to happen. The software on the previous stuff with the uh, with the photographs with the tour, I uh, basically just told them that I was a nonprofit, and they said they didn't have any discounts for nonprofits. And I said, "Well, I'll just go get a kid in college that's in it's I cave with, and he'll he'll get it that way." And they said, "Never mind, here you can have it cheap." And so you know, just I just went with a good bluff with them, and they, you know, they gave me the they gave me the bargain price. So I guess, is the software like the price of a car or what are we talking? Uh, I, I, yes. I agree, yes. Oh yeah. The scene, scene software, the Ferro software is 12,000 and, and it okay. may, you may get it down to six or seven if you don't get a lot of stuff, but yeah, it's, and, and I, I gotten a grant one year where I did a video of the cave and stuff and they wanted it for promotional stuff. And then I, so they gave me a, a, a software seat and then I traded that for LIDAR rental to keep this project going because you know, I, you know, I'd rather be in the cave with a with a piece of equipment than, um, you know, sitting there with uh, the the, you know, with a piece of software. So, like I said, I'm I'm, you know, I just kind of horse trade through this. Oh, hang on, my battery went dead on my camera. Um, my. Uh, you need to carry more batteries with you into your cave meetings. Yeah, I know. I've, oh, I've got I've I brought an extra one. I, uh, my, uh, naturally the, uh, the, uh, uh, camera on my laptop went out as we we're in the middle of needing to be on zoom every week. So I've had to get some freeware to do this and you know, it's just, I'm just making it work. So anyway, like I said, this is kind of the last little piece we see, you know, cartographically just, you know, the cave and, and how it works. Like I said, you can see these pits where these waterfalls are and how they dug down into where they're draining the cave to wherever the water table's going next to, and then of course like I say there's a there's a blue hole I don't know if you guys have that geography where you're at where you'll just have a resurgence of, a, of the groundwater and it'll just be the prettiest blue where it's been away from sunlight and there's not no algae and and it's it's just a pretty thing I, I think there's a Missouri caver on here so I, they got a ton of them out there it's gorgeous Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. That's about all I've got. So if you guys want questions or uh, anything like that, I'll be glad to be glad to answer them in any way I can. Um, I'm not sure if I feel like I covered everything, but if <laughs> oh, uh, one of the things is uh, this uh, the project is uh, happens on uh, on uh, Labor Day at the end of the year because we get the biggest bang out of the out of the lidar rental. So we get it, like I say, we get it for, for Friday night on to, to Tuesday morning for the price of one day's rent. And if, uh, like I said, we've done it where we've just gone 24 hours, just people coming and going and just run, run the thing. So we get, you know, six or seven days out of it uh, and really build some cool data. And then other times, you know, everybody's had a hard week and we work two shifts and then go sleep and eat right. So it's always different, but it's free to anyone who wants to show up. There's no cost. Uh, the grant covers everything unless you want the training. Like I said, that was 25 bucks. Um, and uh, and then, uh, and like I say, your, whatever data you collect when you're up here, you're welcome to. And if you've got a bigger project and you can justify it, you can certainly get more data. So it's that's it's not a closed project or anything like that. It's it's meant to really help anyone build their career or 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 that's really the goal of it is to build human beings. So Kay will be here with me or without me. It's going to do it does what it does. But we got all we got is each other. We're there are not that many of us, so we better look after each other. So. Absolutely. So anyway, uh, any question? 
cool. Thank you for presenting. That was pretty good. Uh, I like to see pairing between the different softwares, like also your calm, fuck you, give me a, a cheaper price for this software. Good. <laughs> um, you seem super resourceful and like good, uh, good way to pair a lot of different things with the same tool. So um, that's cool. And as a young geologist that graduated not too long ago, like totally appreciate the um, work opportunities and experience stuff. So uh, definitely good job with all that. Sure, sure. I, 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 um, uh, I gave up my geology degree to get uh, at the at the end and switch to geography so I could work. So my partner who was here, also, he's a geographer. So oh, okay. we, we got you covered in this household. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, I left it, left it at the end and said, you know, I got a, I got all these kids eating in my house and I got the surface is paying in the subsurfaces. And unfortunately the sewers all blew up in Louisville. And so uh, the caving background and water flow and all paid off. So I guess it was fortunate the sewers blew up. I was the right guy at the right time. <laughs> So how um, how long did the LIDAR project take you um, in just regular time, I suppose? Oh, it's never ended. I mean, we, we're fully funded for this fall. Okay, so you're planning on doing, yeah. how, how much of the 14 miles do you guys have surveyed currently? Oh, we're a little over three miles. Okay. Yeah, we've got all the low hanging fruit. And so right now we're doing... Uh, the next thing is we've we've taken a uh, and we've put a stashed a bunch of food that passage that we started with that that fly through at the end of that passage uh, we've stashed a bunch of food we built a latrine where we can haul out our waste and the next one we're just going to have to do a, a you know the the majority of the workers will be there and then people that want to do day trips can come and go and sherpa stuff in and out so the next one's going to be a little bit you know, you're going to live back there for a little longer. So it's a, a different type of uh, a trip, but anyone's welcome. And like I said, and, and like I said, if you've only got a day, then just show up, carry some fresh batteries back um, and, uh, or carry, you know, carry some snacks back to us or something and, you know, help carry, help carry stuff. I mean, if that's all you got to give, that's certainly, that's enough to get you the day that we, I don't care. You know. Are you guys planning a trip this fall? Yes. Yeah, like I said, we're fu we're completely funded. We've already got our grants secured, and yeah. I've already got the machine reserved. And uh, and I, I to be honest, it's been a a, a a tough time for my family during all of this. Yeah. Uh, so we've had a few losses to uh, to uh, we, uh, my brother-in-law passed from uh, from the flu. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, anyway, yeah. uh, so it's kind of knocked the wind out of me. Uh, to uh, to do stuff, so I'm doing things like this to make get my force myself to put my feet back in the water and do a little more each day. And, right on. Yeah. I hope you have a yeah. great. Time. Like I said, it's a it's an interesting thing. So, so like I said, so they, like I say, these are these these are really good for me. So I'm so grateful that you guys have tolerated me because this is oh, sorry, we're make, happy sorry to, have to make you. it about <laughs> me. But if I if I'm I didn't have tolerating you holding, at all. Yeah, if I didn't have you holding me accountable, I probably would just uh, uh, not be as in, engaged and uh, stuff. So it's really we appreciate it. Yeah. So like I said, I appreciate you all. And I heard Nico's name mentioned. He and I sat in a bar in Baltimore. I, that's the only time I've met him, and uh, talked about this nice. project and caving and what it's what it is to be a decent person uh, for 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 an evening. Uh, oh yeah, he is a decent person. He's yeah. These are um, cave activists, yeah. for sure. So um, Justin oh. Shaw here. So, hey, everybody, you guys, let's unmute and show our appreciation if you can. Oh, my God, yes. Unmute yourselves. Thank you. <laughs> my best bow. Who found a cave? Again, any questions, I'll be glad to do the best I can. Uh, as, like I said, the, the opportunity, this is, an, this is, a, I've created an opportunity for any caver that wants it. And uh, it's always here. So just like post the links on our web page, on our Facebook page for the grotto as a follow up, guys. But they're also in the chat on the meeting here. And then I'll post it on the Facebook page too. Yeah, I've got a, a, a YouTube channel with a section on just the LIDAR stuff where I 
we've got different stuff. So if you want to see things actually in motion with sound, you can you can go look at that. And there's some other awesome. flat rooms that other people have done. And but like I said, Paige was just one in a million. She was just phenomenal. Uh, she got her master's in cave salamanders, and then has gone on to study snakes. So I mean, <laughs> you know, anybody that gets their that spends spends that much time with cave salamanders is all right with me. Uh, uh, fascinating things, those cave salamanders. I've learned more than I wanted to know. We know a lot about salamanders here too. <laughs> oh, really? Do you guys do you have the black ones? No, we have well, we we have the uh, plethodon, which are the black and green spotted ones. Um, okay. You know, this big or so, but we also have like several endangered and threatened um, blind salamanders, Brighton spring salamander, um, and a bunch of others: Jollyville plateau salamander, Salido, uh, Texas blind. Yeah, so we we've got some salamanders down here too. <laughs> Awesome. I just it's know a, the black, a very big black and orange. <laughs> black and yeah, orange. we don't have the black and orange ones like you guys have. But, um, oh, okay. But yeah, it's a very big part of our aquifer and uh, aquifer saving scene. <laughs> it's a, oh. a good, you know, endangered species will always kill a project, right? So good. Very cool. I've, um, I've, I've never caved in Texas, so I need to put it on my list. It's all right. You know, we're okay <laughs> with it. Yeah, come and visit. Yeah. Um, actually, someone mentioned earlier, have you ever heard of our oh, yeah. Hydrogeo, what is it, workshop, Hydrogeo? Yeah, the Texas Hydrogeo workshop, uh, it's Bear Grotto with um, the Edwards Oxford Authority and Scary Shindles, like, pet yeah. project and Bear Grotto's pet project, but yeah. it's a, it's a good, like, yeah. um, I guess, entry-level kind of thing or, like, college-level student. Get yeah. some good hands-on learning on a variety of topics, including cave lidar. They usually do a, a session every year. Oh, cool! Yeah, Gary yeah. used to be an Indiana caver. Yeah, yeah, he's been here for a while. Yeah, um, yeah over a doing things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, hydrogen workshop for for any of the other people on the meeting uh, is a really good opportunity for. Just kind of general knowledge or just like going to cave. Um, I Can think I they do a couple a wild little... cave trips too. Oh. Can I ask What's a up? question? Sure. Um, I work for a real estate developer and we have a camera called Matterport and I go through all these empty suites and make 3D scans of them. Mm -hmm. But I've seen on the Matterport website so it's similar to the LiDAR. I don't know if it's exactly the same, but it's really interesting. And I know that it has been used in caves based on like tours I've seen on the Matterport examples yeah. website, you know? And yeah. so have you ever heard of that or used yeah. that or yeah. thought yeah, of that? I'll look into that because, you know, it's a pay service. So it kind of lost, you know, after I learned right. how to do it. But yeah, because you can take 360 cameras mm -hmm. and capture that data and then it'll geo-reference it and you, you're able to get right links and and size mm -hmm. and, and and it knows where it's at spatially so yeah, yeah. it's a really fascinating thing like i said i've looked into it but i think it's like the cheapest you can get away is like 50 bucks a month or something like that yeah i mean the, but the, it's worth it like in my opinion it's worth it yeah i mean i guess i have an ongoing relationship with my work and we all need you know so in my opinion it's worth it but um yeah. And the camera is so much cheaper. It's like four thousand dollars instead sure. of all these other like I, I amounts think, you've been saying. Yeah, I've seen guys doing it with four hundred dollar cameras. Oh, I thought yeah, you were talking I mean, about six thousand. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah, you. I mean, I'm I'm looking at this really. You know, I was looking at it as a bare bones. How cheap can you get this done? And seeing what guys on YouTube are doing with with you know gray tape and yeah, and, uh, yeah, I've seen some really cool stuff with it. It's just, uh, you know, I'm I'm old and. Every time I have to spend 50 bucks means I have to go earn 50 bucks. And <laughs> I don't know. I guess we're in different situations. Yeah, yeah. You're still making your career and I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm I get it. Be, I, wish I, was, I wish I was done, you know. Yeah, I'm never going to be any more accomplished than this. This is it. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, I was just yeah. curious if, you'd, if you knew anybody that has used, actually used the Matterport in a cave. Do you know any of the no, people no, that have done that? No, no, anybody. This is, this I could think be I should try to. I actually have it at my house, so do it. I, sh I should, can, is, is there a cave I could go do this in? Because 
Like in Austin, I'm serious. I'm asking you guys. What do you think? Could Is I go do Whirlpool? Whirlpool. Whirlpool? Whirlpool. You think Whirlpool would be good, or should I try another cave? No, no, Whirlpool. I, I'm thinking I mean, smaller first, maybe. I think like midnight would be amazing. Midnight. But I don't know if that's yeah. Possible. Why would you not do midnight? That's what I was thinking too. I don't know if it's possible. Because well, you talk to the right people. Yeah, I'd have to hold the tripod or ho I yeah, it wouldn't work. It's not possible. You can get it on a rod like I could definitely like do the bottom. I just couldn't midnight. do like the 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 um drop. I couldn't do the drop. Grace, I, I can help top. you with the drop. Well, I could do the top like a 360 and I could do a well, I just don't want to be in it. That's my problem. Oh. So you need a like like a special rig for the camera to be like halfway in the drop and then scan it, leave it there, and then come back and get it. So doesn't Benji von Kramen do something like this? Ken, do you know this person? Benji, uh, Benji. I yeah, have I've Benji. a double sinkhole. He has some kind of pole situation where you have all kinds of things out on the poles and yeah, uh, it's. That, Are you talking about the guy up in Tang that does the three D stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does all the. Yeah, he lives in Atlanta, but he goes all around. He's been yeah. here. He works with Gary Schindel, and we're back down to that well, one. I, I'll tell you, ninety percent of his stuff is his software magic. I mean, that guy. Yeah. Writes so much stuff, and and just as, I mean, he's he's he he's doesn't brag on it, but he's brilliant in that aspect. Mm -hmm. He's just a, a a you know I mean being able to see it and how to see it and then to go back and write it down and make the, make a piece of software do it. Just that's, you know, that's like writing music. I mean, that's art, mm -hmm. you know, I just, my experience with going, taking expensive equipment into a cave, I would find a walk in cave and just dial in my process before I started doing a tough cave. Yeah, and I'd be fine. I'd be yeah. fine with being in the shot and just know that those are going to get scrapped. These are proof of concept. You know, if it was my, if I were going to try Matterport and I would walk in, go in somewhere where I could carry my stuff in, I'm not wasting time caving. I'm wasting time figuring my, my process out because whatever you think is going to work, it's not. Plus you're going to have, with <laughs> photography, you, you've got the weight of, uh, of lights. You're going to have to light. Right. I, yeah, that's true. That's and, a good point. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. And I have been doing it a lot and I feel like my process is pretty spot on uh -huh. right now. <laughs> I've been doing it a lot. So um, I would really like to try it. I think sure, it'd be really I, would fun. See, I wouldn't see why not. I mean, are you working with flashes? Or are you using like, I don't app? know. I'd have to, I'd actually have to ask for help with that because I don't have any lights myself. I just use natural and like, you know, sure. shop, whatever's in the place that I'm scanning. I use sure. the an office building. Yeah, and no, it looked like the, it looked like the software yeah, would let you lighten it too. That you had yeah. some room in the software to adjust your photography. Me? That true? Yes, in the Matterport uh, software, it looked like you could adjust, like like well, change no. the exposure a little, lighten no. it up. No, no. no. Mm -mm. So they're doing that in some other. Yeah, but actually, the lighting that they use is like spot on. It's like better than the pictures that I take when I'm asked to go take pictures. Oh wow. So, People every every time without fail they want to use those pictures because they're so straight and they're so perfect and they're like ideal, you know. And, yeah. and people like in real estate always want perfect and straight and ideal. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm a, uh, you know, I've done a couple of real estate jobs with the software making those little tours, mm -hmm. and, and they they want everything too. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 